Hi everybody, welcome to Leo's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. It is Saturday after Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a great turkey day, time with friends and family. Looking at Mark's uh, Super XL here, Terry built saw. Done a video on this one earlier. This is the one that let loose the uh, rod bearing, uh, rod cap bolt, whatever you want to call it, and little cap head screw. Ended up embedded in the crankcase. And initially, I thought this crankcase might be salvageable because the Terry saws were, uh, they actually took the time to paint their crankcases. The US models didn't. I have no idea why. But when I got into this just a little bit, it became obvious this crankcase wasn't going to be usable. That's where the, uh, the head of the bolt is embedded in the crankcase there and you can see it's punctured all the way through so unfortunately mark this turned out to be a doa as well but got pretty much everything together that was necessary found a, a good used piston and cylinder on ebay i had the crankshaft crankcase so this won't be too terrible it's going to still be in the ballpark we talked about but Getting this back together, uh, one of the few tips for folks I wanted to throw out here. Uh, if you've got one of these things all tore down to this point, there's an order putting it back together that'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. Like, when you get your piston and cylinder back together, next thing you ought to do, get your coil bracket and your coil on there. The reason I say this is this your spark plug wire has to fish behind between the cylinder and the throttle handle if you do this first when you go to bolt your throttle handle up this will already be in place you bolt your throttle handle up and then put your coil on you're gonna have to mess around with pulling this boot off slipping it through putting the boot back on well if you've ever replaced one of these you know that it's not a lot of fun to do that Obviously, after this goes on, you got to get your fuel tank on. But there's a couple things here that you need to watch out for. Number one, on these coil bolts, put some Loctite on them. A little dab of Loctite red is what I prefer. You could get away with blue, but why? Just a nice little dab. I'm not talking about getting carried away. These are the fuel tank bolts. Let's see if I can get a... You can see, I think, just on the end there, a little bit in the threads. That's all you need. You don't want to go crazy. This stuff is way too expensive to be wasting it. And plus, if you ever have to take it apart, you want to be able to get it apart. You just don't want it to be able to rattle apart. Later versions of the Super XL were notorious for a little problem of these fuel tank bolts backing off. Now because a batch apparently made it through the tumbler without getting Loctite on them. Bad news. Because when that happens, they back right into your flywheel. Acts like the saw is seized up. A lot of guys threw their saws away because they thought they had seized when all it was was that screw in the back of the damn flywheel. Now it's good for guys like me who know to look for those and uh, I can repair them. But anyway, Definitely Loctite red on these. These are a bigger thread. They're a 1220. Definitely Loctite red. That's the best way to go. Mark, the other thing I came across as I was unpacking everything uh, to put your saw back together. This is your old flywheel. We're missing a, uh, a fin here. And there was some wear on the crankshaft seal on this side. Uh, and this is going to create a wobble, so I'm going to go ahead and get a good good flywheel with all the fins in there. So I'll get a little further and uh, we'll come back to this.
Okay, welcome back to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. This is part two of Mark's XL Automatic. And man, has this thing fought me. Our uh, first video was shot somewhere around 7 o'clock this morning, maybe 7.30. It's 11.30 now. This saw has had every little possible thing that could be a pain in the neck be a pain in the neck. Uh, every once in a while you get one that just has some issues. So I got it back together the first go around and it did start, albeit it took too many cranks, more than I felt it should. Uh, so I started getting back into things. Uh, there was still some carburation issues, big time carburation issues. And uh, it took a while to track all those down. First two things that I came across were the reed valves. Now I had overlooked these because it was so slight. But I'm going to see if I can get the camera to focus. You see the dimples? Those damn things weren't seating flat. Evidently when the uh, rod went in this thing it actually sent some debris back up the intake that managed to smack these reed valves and put those little dimples in them. So that was one issue. Next issue was the fuel inlet needle in the carburetor and the metering arm had issues. This thing has been bent and adjusted so many times it's out of shape. This needle is actually about a sixteenth of an inch too tall. More than likely why this ding, uh, the metering arm itself, was out of whack. Let's see, what else did we have? The old gasket was leaking slightly at the uh, intake block here. It was spongy. The fuel line that was on it was actually compressed where the grommet went through the tank. And then the most critical issue, the one that took me the longest to find, in these tillots and carburetors you've got on the metering side, so the bottom side where the screws are, this is a Zama, but it's the same basic principles. When you pull this off, you've got your big diaphragm in there, and on the high side, underneath the welch plug, there's just a passage, that's all it is. You've got a hole that lets gas in, and then your screw meters how much of it can actually go down into the uh, down into the engine. So there's a screen underneath there, right before it goes into the carburetor. And that screen had deteriorated and also collected some sort of an orange goo that I'm assuming was rotten fuel, tough to say. But it had completely com just made it to where it would not suck fuel on the high side. So it would idle all day long out of adjustment a little bit, but it would idle all day long. And the minute you pulled the trigger, just blah, nothing. So, anyway, I think we finally are at a point where I can say this thing is running right, Mark. I'll get the handle put back on, uh, a few more things, the choke rod and all that kind of stuff, and then uh, get this drained and uh, we'll get it ready so it can come back to you.